Hey everyone, in my latest podcast, I learned that 90% of transactions in the cannabis industry is due to cash. So what's that translate into? A lot of robberies for many dispensaries across the industry. Well, in my latest interview, I sit down with a company who made a big announcement this week. They're an e-commerce platform that's raised over $600 million and they plan to bring the online shopping experience to a whole new level and most importantly, making it safer. Who is it? Find out now on our latest podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dales Report, and I'm happy to be joined. It's been a while since we spoke to these guys two years ago, but now we bring in, he is the co-founder and chief product officer of Dutchie, Zach Lipson joins us. Zach, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, before we were uh, recording, we were staying off camera. Last time I spoke to you guys, this is crazy, two years to the day, July 20th, 2020, I had your brother, co-founder and CEO, Ross Lipson on, and uh, what a story this has been. Two years, how much has changed, but uh, you guys having fun doing this? Because whenever I see a press release, it looks like you guys are doing a lot of things right. It's it's been a blast. It's been uh it's been an incredible experience over the past couple of years. Five yeah. years. We we actually just hit our five year anniversary as a business. So wow. uh, it's been a couple of years since we've talked, but we've been at this for a while and you know, we're definitely excited about all the new launches and the products that we're taking to market. Yeah. Well let's focus on and I, I think a lot of my viewers will know who you are, but if not, uh we begin with your company, which is a SaaS platform that enables consumers to buy cannabis online anywhere across North America. As I said, it's been two years since we had your brother on Ross. Uh, all you guys have done since then is raise over $600 million in five separate rounds, which is funded by 15 investors. So let's talk about some hope, some good stories here, because the markets are so challenging right now. But walk me through, I'm walking down the hallway, you're meeting with your first investors. What was that meeting like? And then how did it grow from there? Yeah, so let's go, we'll go all the way back, you know. And yeah. Actually, the, the, the origins of the company, um, you know, we, we started this about five years ago, like I just mentioned, and essentially the, the initial idea came from Ross and Ross's background in the online food ordering space. Right. You know, and kind of this light bulb went off for him five years ago, you know, as he was standing in line at a dispensary in Oregon, which is, you know, his hometown where he lives today and where the company's headquartered out of in Bend. Uh, delivery had just gone legal, right? So there was a really transformational change happening, particularly in Oregon. And Oregon is a, a progressive market. Yeah, um, both cannabis and now in, in other things like psilocybin, for example. But for sure, they were pushing it forward. We saw them enable delivery, and the light bulb went off for Ross. You know, what if I, what if I take some of the things that I've learned in the online food ordering space, mm-hmm. and, I, and I bring them here into cannabis because that's an experience I, I, I imagine that consumers are going to want in, you know, for cannabis as well, not just food. Um, he brought that to me. And my backgrounds have been in software development. I had been at multiple startups that I co-founded in the past, you know, more on the product and design side. And that's what I do here today at Dutchie as well. Um, Ross is on the business and sales side. So he brought the concept to me and it, immediately I was like, there's, this is something that this market, um, you know, there's a great precedent for this and yeah. you know, this, this market probably needs. And also that there's, there's a really important mission here. I knew a little bit about the cannabis industry. I, yep. you know, I'm familiar with what was happening in the space. I've been following it. Um, a, a personally, a consumer myself, as well as, you know, Ross's as well. And we had seen some really great stories. And, and as we dug into the space and learned about what the needs were for consumers, mm-hmm. so this became really exciting, and really compelling. We set out to build it. Uh, we focused first on this e-commerce piece, right? Yeah. Like, how do we basically bring online ordering into this industry because it really wasn't there prior to to dutchy we saw some early companies trying to to figure it out but there wasn't a great solution in the space um and as we brought ours to market we started to see we started to see it really take off we started to see like a, an incredible amount of adoption yeah um, the dispensaries were embracing it uh the solution basically allowed them to embed online ordering directly into their websites and you know that experience was was then you know wholly owned by them it was their customers they were shopping online but through the dutchy product in the website mm-hmm. um, you know and then of course we did start working with some of our investors we got connected to some incredible people in the investment community casa verde is, yep. is you know uh, a company that that led our seed rounds you know as you mentioned kind of that first meeting and it was really exciting talking to them you know they were people that 
really understood the space and they had made some pretty great investments. Already. That's half of it, right? Yeah, that's it's super important. We didn't just want we weren't just looking for funding. We were looking for, you know, a partner, an investment mm -hmm. partner, an investor that could come on, work with us, you know, and who knew the space that could give us guidance as well. It wouldn't just be cash. Um, and we got that from them. They've been just an absolutely incredible partner. We've had additional great. investors come on in subsequent rounds, but we've gotten the same kind of great impact from as well. Ron Ventures is another example of, of that. Um, you know, and from there, the re you know, obviously there's a lot of ground to cover here, but we, there's an important piece to the story that comes next, which is we started to understand the relationship between e-commerce and point of sale in this space. Okay. And we started integrating with a number of cannabis point of sales. Um, in this industry, in cannabis, what's, what's unique is that you have a really interesting kind of regulatory framework that's state by state. And that's because of the federal legality of mm -hmm. this product, mm -hmm. that there are state regulations that these dispensaries have to comply with. Um, and because of that, it precipitates the need for unique technology solutions, right? So you see cannabis specific point of sales, uh, you know, basically, um, you know, existing in the space and you don't have kind of the, you know, kind of more agnostic uh, standard point of sales coming in, right? And because of that, we leaned into those relationships. We partnered with them. We utilized their APIs to make sure the inventory was fresh and, and dynamic. Yeah. Um, and over time, those relationships grew to the point where about a year and a half ago, we made the decision that we wanted to come together with point of sale um, and e-commerce and bring those solutions, you know, together, um, you know, under one roof, be a single provider. It's great. And that was the acquisitions of both Leaf Logics and GreenBits that we did about a year and a half ago. And that yep. also came with uh, a round of funding as well. So explain just to my viewers, backtrack a little bit. What was that transaction all about? And most importantly, uh, for those that aren't familiar with that transaction, go into detail as to what it was and kind of elaborate more on your point of sale comment that you were mentioning. Yeah, so this was our Series C. Um, we raised uh, uh, a pretty substantial amount of funding and, and also acquired these two point of sale companies at the same time. Um, and to, to go into a little bit more detail about it. so. The point of sale is where the inventory lives for the mm -hmm. dispensary. It's also the central hub for compliance at the retail level, right? It, it's it's technology that not only holds the inventory, deals with reporting, um, but it and, and it and essentially has another piece, which is the cash register at the front of house. But it's also uh, kind of that central compliance hub, as I mentioned too. It makes mm -hmm. sure it, it helps the dispensaries basically stay compliant in their operations, and everything has to get reported back to the state. And that's the unique piece about these systems. Now, because it holds the inventory, you yeah. want basically, basically through an API integration, you want to have access to that inventory to populate the online menu. And that's really important. Of course. And that allows us to create a full-time experience for the shoppers. Right. So it was a really critical piece. Um, what we saw with that acquisition was an opportunity to uh, basically make the process incredibly more efficient for our retailers, right? And what's that so mean? Uh, basically, in, in, in basically increase the efficiencies, you know, with regards to both selling your products online and in store. Um, you know, in the in the past, we were working through APIs, right? Different companies working in partnership through APIs. You know, you have limitations with that. For example, the the inventory would refresh on average right around five minutes, um, and those limitations still exist in the space today. By bringing the solutions under one roof, we can start to eliminate those things. You know, and we've done quite a bit of work there to, to do mm -hmm. that. So it's one company that you're working with, a single provider solution. Um, and that has, of course, a ton of other efficiencies as well with respect to customer service, customer support, of course. Uh, product development, which is the area that yeah. I work on here. Yeah. You know, we can do so much more when we're utilizing, you know, when we have access to both of those products. And, you know, we're going to talk about Dutchie Pay in a minute. It's a really good example of kind of how something like that came to fruition. Yeah, we will get into that. I'd be curious, where do you see this industry growing and developing as it grows? When uh, when you when you think about the online experience versus say, obviously dispensaries, like do you see like, look, everybody's since COVID has changed their whole patterns in life where it seems like everything's online. Do you see obviously, yes, that's going to grow. And do dispensaries stay around as much, you know, as to where they are today? Or do you think that we'll start to see a downsize in, you know, the amount of brick and mortar locations across the country, uh, let's say over the next three, five years? Yeah, I mean, I think that we're seeing, I think we're at a really interesting point, 
right now. With yeah, we, we did see what the pandemic, you know, the effect that the pandemic had mm-hmm. it did drive customers online. Right. We, we, we saw that, of course, with with our offering, our e-commerce offering, you know, the physical stores had to shut down. You couldn't have people coming in to your stores anymore. Mm-hmm. So, but they, but they were deemed critical businesses. Right. right. So yeah, they were, they were, that was huge. They, it was huge. It was amazing, and and it was a great thing, I think, for you know, for the industry and and for of course consumers. You, you have to remember that a lot of consumers in this space, this is their medicine. You know, this isn't something that they're ju- just using recreationally. Yeah. This is actual medicine, and you know, I I I have, I have some incredible stories of people that I've talked to about that. Um, but getting back to it, so the we saw a pretty big shift, you know, and I think what we saw, in my opinion, was an acceleration. I think that that was going to happen eventually, you know, it just was going to take a longer time. And and COVID and the pandemic, it essentially condensed that down into a shorter period, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We saw just this big ramp up, this big acceleration, and it moved the industry online. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we're not you know, in the same place as we were a couple of years ago with respect to the pandemic. And we are seeing uh, in-store traffic start to pick up again. Yeah. But I think those behaviors have been cemented a little bit, you know, and uh, maybe even a, a good deal. Um, and we're still seeing the online order volume stay, you know, pretty high. Um, do we're you, excited about that. Do you think like a lot of people, once they go into a brick and mortar store, find a product, a brand that they like, it's now consistent where they don't have to go there anymore. And it's just, do you find a lot of the patterns and routines of like their purchase orders and transactions? Once they find something, it's that same purchase order over and over. It depends. So when you look at the consumer behavior in the space, it depends really on the persona of the customer we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for example, we have our power users. Right. And that's a segment that we, you know, when we look at their behavior, they're shopping around a little bit in terms of, of the brands that they might shop with. Yeah. They're looking at different attributes of the product. So, for example, they might like, you know, high THC flower and they're looking for new strains. They're looking to explore a little bit. Okay. They have the, they have kind of that expert knowledge of, you know, what they like. They know maybe even so far as the terpenes or the cannabinoids getting into kind of the more right. scientific and, you know, technical aspects of the products. Now you shift gears and you look at people who are newer to the space and who have started to try products and they don't have that deep knowledge. Generally, what we find with those consumers is that they latch on to a particular product and then they tend to be repeat gotcha. customers of that brand or product. Itself. So it's a balance between the two then. That's right. So as it stands right now, we obviously know this with the industry, it's dominated by cash transactions at the dispensary level, which is helping obviously to foster a robbery spree, to say the least, what we see around the country. So let's now focus on the news that came out earlier this week pertaining to you, where you announced the launch of what's called Dutchie Pay, which is a fully integrated e-commerce and point of sale solution that's going to allow consumers to purchase their favorite cannabis products online. So walk me through how exactly is this going to work and is it a game changer for the industry? Yeah, so we talked a little bit about kind of the the technology stack that we've been building yeah. with e-commerce and point of sale. We really look at payments as kind of a the third piece to that, right? And like you just mentioned, it's a very difficult payments environment in cannabis. Uh, some people are not fully aware of this, but yes, it is a largely cash based mm-hmm. industry still, mm-hmm. which is wild to think about. Mm-hmm. And, and well, let's talk about that for a second, because it, it presents a really big problem for retailers in the space. Um, you mentioned theft and robbery. Yeah. Safety is probably the biggest problem. Huge. Handling large, large amounts of cash. And there are some really, really sad stories that we, we're seeing because of this. It, it basically paints a target uh, for these dispensaries. Um, let's look at cash management. It's ironically very expensive to handle cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have, you know, the cost of security, of course, as we just talked about safety yep. handling large amounts. You also have to transport cash, mm-hmm. right? So we see that cash management fees are actually a real problem as well. And then one more, which is just the inefficiencies of handling cash, right? It is not efficient for staff to be handling cash. It takes more time. And then it introduces the potential of human error, which is just a natural problem when you have bud tenders and staff members keying in manually values, right? And you have downstream impacts from that. It's a valid right? point. Numbers are off, taxes are off, reporting's off. You know, so there, there's some real challenges around this. And unfortunately, based on the regulatory environment, it has to be largely cash still. Um, so that's why we're excited about this. Um, we, you know, utilizing the ACH network, we're able to basically offer a digital payment solution 
Um, and then furthermore, take it one step further, we have both the online experience and the in-store experience. Right. So the, the, the way that the consumer is shopping, they're utilizing a Dutchie product. They're utilizing a Dutchie yeah. checkout. You can embed that payment product, you know, that, that digital payment solution, which is Dutchie Pay, directly into the checkout experience. They don't have to jump out to a third party. It feels, con it's simple, yep. it's fast, it's convenient. They pay for their products there. It's a, it's a, norm, a fairly normalized experience for the customer. And then that payment moves right into the cash register. Mm -hmm. Again, it's our sale, right? So now we have, a, it's huge, it's amazing. And, and, and the dispensary then gets to reap the benefit of the solution as well, right? Their bud tenders are not handling cash. They're not manually keying in you know, a payment value. They're just seeing that the order is paid for with Dutchie Pay, and that's it. Why don't you think somebody's come up with this idea sooner? Because quite honestly, this has been badly needed, and this has been a hot topic for this industry for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's because we're in a unique position. And again, it's because we have both the e-commerce solution as well as the point of sale. And if we have dispensaries that are utilizing both of those solutions, it creates a unique opportunity for us as a as a a, a provider to create kind of to, to like bridge that gap mm -hmm. in terms of payment to create like a fully integrated solution that moves end to end that spans you know the beginning of the experience all the way to the end and i think that's what's unique about this and that's what's unique about the opportunity we have as a business here one would ask value add uh what you provide say versus other cannabis platforms that are operating in the market right now case example like a company like weed maps what's your response to that yeah, so WeedMaps operates uh, more as a, a marketplace. It's a consumer, largely a consumer facing brand. And we partner with WeedMaps, um, you know, in many different ways. Um, so our solution is a little bit different. Our solution is more focused on businesses and providing technology right, to right. the sellers. You know, they're, they're first and foremost, they are our customer. That's who we're serving. That's who we want to create solutions for. You know, our, our mission since day one, and it still is today, is to provide safe and easy access to right. cannabis. We do that by providing this type of technology to our retailers so they can better serve their customers. You know, that's, that's the way that we want to enable the industry. Um, and that's why we're leaning in with these types of products and taking them to market. Well, the big thing that I noticed in this press release as well was the stat where you mentioned the statistics is that approximately statistics, excuse me, uh, that approximately 90% uh, of all dispensary transactions right now are from cash. Uh, I didn't realize it was that high, but obviously it makes sense, right? It's a cash is still king yeah. here in cannabis. And it's a, and again, it, it's a really serious problem for these operators, you know, so we've got to move beyond that. Yeah, We have to, I think technology companies like ours, we have almost a moral responsibility to push beyond mm -hmm. the balances of cash to move the industry forward and begin to normalize these types of experiences and look out for the dispensaries, make sure that they have what they need to run efficient businesses you know, and continuously make these products better for them. How many dispensaries have you guys partnered now with across the country in the U.S.? We work with roughly around 5,500 different dispensaries. Wow. Technology, yeah. I think it was 17 or 1,800 when I was talking to Ross two years ago. So it's grown that much. There's been a tremendous amount of growth over the past couple of years, yeah. Not a bad place to be. You hiring? <laughs> we still are hiring. Yeah, we are hiring. You know, we have a number of different roles we're working right now. Good for you. Uh, I want to focus on banking reform and the obviously hot topic of the Safe Banking Act. Uh, do you think safe banking has a chance of passing this year? And if so, how exactly would that impact your business model? Yeah, we hope. We really, yeah. really hope that you know, we see more movement on safe. Um, Joe Biden came we'll out with see. an interesting tweet this week too. So it's, uh, I'm getting this feeling, but I don't want to like be that guy because, you know, everybody's been down here about a hundred times. They don't want to get their hopes up, but yeah. I think it's now or I never think, for the Dems. Uh, yeah, it, it's an interesting question and it's an interesting topic. We, I, I did see the the the, uh, the quote from Biden as well and the potential move on, on reform there. I we'll see you know we yeah. are hopeful and i think that's 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 what we're you know we're excited about it and, and and again like this this is something that will push the industry forward it will help to destigmatize and normalize you know what we see in the cannabis mm -hmm. industry the experience that are available to the dispensaries and the customers we're absolutely behind it of course um you know we want to see this we want to see movement here uh and we're gonna of course ad adapt and continue to bring more products like dutchy pay and other offerings to market you know if uh 
if the landscape changes, if and when it does. Yeah, well, it's it'll be huge. Obviously, fix this 280e tax code as well, and you know, instantly overnight, a lot of the uh, bottom line balance sheets of these companies will double uh, just by changing that 280e tax code. But you know, the time has come. It has come. Everybody's frustrated. Uh, you know, I still think it's such a polarizing industry that many people are following because. You know, when you look at the opportunity, even from an investment standpoint, as just what happened in the Canadian landscape six, seven years ago, it's nowhere in comparison to what you're going to see on the American side. And, you know, it's been tough sledding for the industry from an investment standpoint for probably close to 18 months now. But still, people are knocking on the door every single day, looking online to see how much progress is being made. Do you not relate or feel the same way when it comes to that? I do. And, and you know, the, the, here's the interesting thing, too. The, the industry's growing. Yeah, I know. So incredible rate, you know, d despite sort of the macroeconomic conditions right now um, that we're all, of course, aware of. But the industry still continues to grow. Yeah. You know, th this this is a product that people get a ton of value out of, you know. And we've talked a little bit about it. But again, this is it's it's there's recreational value, of course, but there's medicinal value here too. And this does this can do a lot of good for society. We firmly believe that. That's why we're on the mission that we're on. Um, you know, and and we're seeing, of course, the you know, the, the public respond yeah. that way too. And I think the exciting thing too is we're seeing new markets yeah. come online. You know, we're, we've got some really exciting movements, uh, you know, in, in states like New York. Um, it's of course a big one. Uh, so the, the industry continues to expand, the industry continues to grow. You know, we're here to, to help with, with that and support it, of course, in, in as many ways as we can. Um, you know, push out products like that today. Yeah, I think important too that you shared at the beginning is that look at Ross's and yours background. And then you said that you weren't really into cannabis, but it's like when people are trying to reinvent themselves post COVID and a lot of jobs and industries will go obsolete. You don't have to kind of like go out and reinvent the wheel. It's like whatever you found out and the information that you learn, regardless of what your career in, just apply it into this new digitized world, which you guys have done incredible. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And, 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 you know, uh, I've been a consumer uh, for a while. I think that the when we initially started looking at the cannabis space, and I'd been following what was happening, yeah. and I think that we what here's what really kind of moved the needle for me is when I started talking to customers, yeah. when I started talking to consumers, right? and I, it started to open my world up to what this can really do for people. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it started to can you give me an really, example because I know you touched on that earlier, but you know you talked about yeah, people needing medicine yeah, and you got some great stories, but give me maybe an example of one. I had a, a, you know, basically when we were doing some early testing on the products, so we had, you know, kind of like some MVP designs. We, we do this in products, of course. We have, you know, designs of what we're trying to create. We want to talk to people about how they might perceive them. Um, I had a conversation in in, uh, in Bent where we're, we're based out of where we're headquartered with a woman who, she's a mother of three, yeah. um, was a recovering cancer survivor. Wow. She had a brain tumor. And uh, she did not really have the ability to get out to the dispensary. Um, it was difficult for mm -hmm. her. She had three kids, she was old, she had a full-time job. She had, you know, of course her, um, she was recovering from cancer, but she still had, you know, a number of different treatments that she was on. And we started talking about delivery and it was like, I, I watched her almost break down wow. because of what that was gonna do for her. Um, you know, and it, she, her medicine could come to her. You know, and again, this is yeah. five years ago. This is Oregon just announcing that they were going to, you know, uh, legalize delivery. And it was groundbreaking for someone like her. And then furthermore, when I could show her these designs and she was like, oh my God, if I can go online and if I could view the menu and I could, uh, you know, I could, you know, basically just order these products very simply and it's just gonna come to, right to my door. This is like transformative for me. Yeah. Um, I've had a number of like a number of those conversations with people and it is just it it just it, it really reframes how you think about you know this industry and the product. Jeff Bezos says it best, invest in companies that help improve people's lives, right? Absolutely. Last thing I want to touch on, um, and I've touched on it a little bit earlier in this interview, but the valuation. Last October, you announced a $350 million Series D financing round uh, with much of the money earmarked towards building out your industry-leading cannabis uh, commerce platform. Uh, you implied that the valuation of this company is now worth $3.7 billion. You and your brother ever look back and just go like, 
wow, like this is this is incredible, which has just happened. But I'd be curious to know friends, family, like everybody that supported you, like what, what's been the feedback? But this this has been one of the most incredible feel good stories in this industry. And uh, you haven't gotten a lot of them, you know, in the last little bit. But needless to say, uh, a big, you know, uh, kudos to you guys for what you've done, obviously, over the last couple of years. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a journey. It's been a pretty incredible experience. And, you know, as any entrepreneur will attest, you know, it's there's there's it's a it is a journey. Right? Of course, you know, you have you have all your lows, you go through a lot. And, and there's a ton of hard work, yep. of course, as we all know, that goes into to getting us to where we are today. And a lot of people, too, you know, like Ross and I started this, but it's been just an incredible team effort. We have some amazing people here at Dutchie that are working day in and day out on things like this. It takes so much to bring these solutions to life and take them out to the market, yeah. make sure that our customers are supported through them, you know, and we're grateful, really grateful for the people we have, um, for the support that we've gotten from our investors and from the industry. And of course, from you know, like our individual personal networks. Um, so yeah, it's, we've got a lot of room still, a lot of, a lot of exciting things that we're, you know, we're, we're, we're working on too. And you're going to see not just Dutchie pay, but you're going to see some other things that are coming up in the near future, um, that we're going to be taking to market to, to again, just further. This That's mission. great. We, we have to, we've got to, of course, continue to push on and bring more technology to market. That's going to help make it easier for these dispensaries and safer. Uh, for them to provide access to their consumers. So we want to hear from you. If you're watching this right now, 90% of cannabis transactions are related to cash. But with this announcement this week, Dutchie announces Dutchie Pay, which is an e-commerce platform that's going to allow people to further enhance their online experience and more or less being more accommodating for people, getting what they want more efficiently and more safe. Seems to be a good step in the right direction. I applaud what you guys are doing. Zach, appreciate the time and let's keep in touch. Absolutely. This is great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, wait until you see what we have next. Some of the best thought leaders in the verticals that we cover from cannabis and psychedelics to cryptos and NFTs and sports wagering. So if you want to learn more, make sure to click on that bell for all notifications. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.